car crashed into the hill. That car then drove off. The family say they've been inundated with offers of help, but the one thing they need is for the driver to come forward. Sean Whiter is determined to walk his fiancée Charlotte down the aisle next summer. Despite him losing both legs after a hit and run crash on Friday on this road near Newmarket, that he helped a friend change a flat tire. The reality of his recovery and journey ahead perhaps beginning to sink in. He's more tired today and he's just literally been pressed on uh, his third operation. Um, but up until today, he's been very chipper. Um, but I think it's all starting to catch up with him now and he's quite you know, he's tired. But he's gen generally in really good spirits. The family are um, he's, he's sort of taking everything in his stride and he's holding the whole family together with his positivity. I mean, you've been by his bedside this morning. Um, what sort of things? his bedside. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of things is he saying to you? Um, he's, he's more interested in, in sort of, in general day-to-day -day things. He's, he's just, he's an inspiration. He's, 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 he's very nervous, he's a bit scared, but no day is a bad day with him. Um, nothing. Nothing sort of touches him the way it might touch me. It's, it's, he's, he's so positive. He, just life in general with him is always force. He's ever looked back. Does Sean talk at all about the driver? Um, he, he, he has mentioned that on a couple of occasions um, just the fact that he, he does not quite understand how someone could be in that condition, um, which is very upsetting. You know, just hear him, hear him say that. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, we just, we just have to get closer to him, and we just have to work with this person, and we're coming to that music. You're very close with his brothers, aren't you? Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? It's very hard to take him, because obviously, he's my brother, and he has to work with him, so he loves to die. He's very close. Ultimately, we just want to get closer to him. And because you both share that love of, of football and you know how much of a passion it was for him, how do you think he's going to to cope with that? Uh, it's going to be very hard to um, just for him to stand back maybe and watch a game without trying to get involved. Um, but we don't know with technology and everything else will come out on a day to day basis. You never know, you might see him, you might see him doing kick ups again, you never know. We hope you do. And um, thank you for talking to us. I know we need to go now and give your brother a kiss before we go to hand his operation. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I had a text from uh, Sean's stepfather a short while ago to say that uh, Sean is still in fear of He's going to let us know how he gets on and we'll let you know. A man accused of killing his wife in a care home in Essex has told a jury he was planning to shoot his sister as well. Ronald King shot his wife, Rita, at point blank range. He claimed she smiled as he did it. Mr. King, who was on fire in Chancellor, denies that. And he got it just sent this week. Royal King started giving evidence for the first time today, telling the jury from his wheelchair how he first met his wife Rita at a dance class. They've been married 59 years, but lately she became confused and not with it. Mr. King said the revolver had been his father-in-law's, found in a toolbox with three bullets, wrapped in a poison rag. It's 24 hours later before the payments can be called. Still to come tonight, helping us understand the problems for people with dementia by putting us in their shoes. Alfred Hewitt from Norfolk helps me history. There's been more criticism today of Bedfordshire police for the way they deal with vulnerable people. But there was praise for the police in Essex, who have improved. The reports were released today following a visit by inspectors in April. Both forces were re-inspected because last December they were judged to be inadequate at protecting children who were at risk. Today, Essex police have been told they've made good progress, while Bedfordshire police still have considerable more to do. In Beckettshire, the police watchdog HIC identified serious witnesses in dealing with the vulnerable. After a revisit, the report says police handling of cases involving missing and absent children requires significantly more work, and it says police must no longer risk assess domestic violence.
Thank you. 